Our fifth lesson in chapter one is the collection of the sample data that we've talked about, all the different types of sample data that we've talked about. We'll discuss the actual collection and the types of collection that we can do here. Several different types, several different combinations of types that we can do here. So obtaining data right from the start is really only done in two specific ways. We obtain data from observational study, which is the most common type of way to collect data, and experiments, usually done in the medical field. Observational study will include observation and measurement of any specific characteristics that you see while observing. The important part here is that there is absolutely no attempt to modify anyone that you are studying. It is strictly an observational test and how people function in different types of environments, different uh, formats of working, uh, education, etc. Where you'll see experiments is typically in the medical field. The experimentation process applies some sort of treatment and then proceeds to observe any effects on the subjects or what we call experimental units. Typically with experimentation you'll have two groups. You'll have a treatment group and you'll have a placebo group. So let's take a look at some types of sampling. First of all, a random sample any sample where the members of the population are being selected in such a way that every person has an equal chance of being selected. So if I have a group of 30 and I have to choose one person, every single person in that group has a 1 out of 30 chance of being selected. There's no bias towards anyone because of any type of uh, advantage that there could be. A simple random sample is selected that every sample of the same size has the same chance of being chosen. Typically when we do our samples this is the one that we'll use most often. I don't particularly agree that this is the best type of sample but for elementary statistics purposes this is the one that most people use. And a probability sample involves selecting members such that every member has a chance of being selected, but those chances might not be equal. If you're selecting uh, from 30 boys and girls a member of the girls' basketball team, well, clearly, you could ha I guess the boys could have a chance of being selected, but it's probably not very appropriate to put a boy on the girls' basketball team. So the girls would have a more significant chance of being on the team. Other types of sampling, we talk about systematic sampling. This is what I like to call the cop type of sampling because there's a starting point and then oh, I'm just going to select every other one. It's kind of how most cops do their speeding tickets. I'll let one go and I'll catch the next one. Then I'm going to let one go and catch the next one. Um, you know, if you're doing a sampling thing where you're, you know, you want to give out a sample to every fifth person that walks in to the cafeteria. It has to be every fifth person. You have to stick to that system. Convenience. It is what it sounds like. Convenience sampling is using... Getting samples any way you possibly can. Yelling out your window. Standing outside of, you know, oh, okay, the most people in the world are going to be at the mall today. So I'm going to stand outside the mall and just grab everybody I can. You're doing it for convenience purposes. Stratified sampling, the sampling method that I most agree with. You're splitting the population into at least two groups. Each person in the group shares a common characteristic, and your samples are taken from each of the subgroups. In my personal opinion, the stratified sample is 
the easiest, or I shouldn't say the easiest, but the most accurate of sampling methods in terms of what you want to study. Cluster sampling, we talk about where the population is divided into sections, not necessarily groups. When you're talking about groups, groups typically have some sort of common characteristic like we talked about with stratified sampling. This particular population, we're just dividing them up into sections. And after we divide them up into sections, we're going to take people eat from each section and randomly select. But then we're going to take the, we have to make sure that there's one from each section, at least one from each section, preferably more. And we take the samples from those subjects and we call it the cluster. And of course, multi-stage sampling gets a little more difficult. Multi-stage sampling is when we're taking different samples, or we're taking samples in different stages, and each of the stages that we use, or that we uh, decide to take data from, we use a different sampling method each time. Homework in this section is again just another homework part of understanding. We're going to do pages 34 to 36, numbers 2 to 24 even.